Well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's Byron King uh, with Investor Intel. And today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Chalmers of Energy Fuels, as well as Jack Lifton. Uh, Jack is on the advisory board to Energy Fuels. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for being here. Uh, Mark, there are amazing developments going on uh, in, the, in the field. For people who um, aren't entirely up to speed on energy fuels, give us, like, give us the one minute summary of, of what's going on uh, with the company. Uh, not, not that there's a lot going on, but see what you can do to get it down to just a, a, a brief discussion. Well, again, thanks, Byron, for, for doing this interview. Um, look, at Energy Fuels is, is unique. Um, uh, you know, typically people invest in a uranium company or they invest in a rare earth company, uh, but I don't know of any other investment they can make in both, and that's what Energy Fuels is. We have a long history of producing uranium um, going back, you know, 40 years. Uh, I've been in the business for over 40 years and produce uranium all over the world, uh, including vanadium. But recently, and we're just coming up on our two-year anniversary that we announced we're getting into rare earth space, mm -hmm. primarily focused on monazite sands, okay, or other hard rock monazite type deposits that have uranium uh, and uh, these, these uh, significant distributions of, of uh, the rare earths, um, both the lights and the heavies, which is, uh, which is an area that we are so excited about because we think our focus on critical elements as a whole, uranium, vanadium, and the rare earths is like um, the gig, could be the gigafactory of critical minerals in the United States of America. Well, that, that's a that's a great introduction. Uh, I hold in my hand here a, a crystal of monazite. This is a beautiful crystal from a pegmatite. You would not want to throw this in the crusher because you could sell it for a couple hundred bucks at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. But this uh, monazite. Uh, contains rare earth elements, as you mentioned. But, but again, one of the problems is there's low levels of uranium and thorium. So what you're saying, sir, is that you, you have the ability because of your nuclear processing side that you can safely handle within regulatory limits the, uh, the uranium and thorium that come out of this product, yes? Correct. And, 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 and that's the secret ingredient is we can safely handle and monetize the uranium and potentially monetize the thorium and the other radionuclides. So everybody else is focusing on, we don't have radionuclides in our rare earth feeds or it's low levels. And we're saying, bring it on, the more the better. And um, the reason that we have uh, approval from the state of Utah to process monazite sands is because the grade of uranium in monazite sands uh, is a, about equal to the grade of the uranium ores that we typically process. So it is a uranium ore for us. So what's the status of your program right now? Are you, are you receiving material right now and processing it, you know, from the dump truck to some final, uh, some final level or wh where, where do you stand on that? Yeah. Well, right and, now, the only source of monazite we have, monazite sands comes from Kimors in Georgia. Okay. Um, they are shipping us relatively small quantities, around a thousand tons. Um, and uh, so even though it's, 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 it's relatively small quantities, uh, it is small commercial, I call. And, and um, we receive the monazite sands. They're around 50 to 60 percent uh, rare earth oxides uh, contained in that monazite. Uh, we're processing it at the White Mesa mill. We can make a clean rare earth carbonate. Um, that is free of the radionuclides and shipping it to Estonia, to, to Silmet, um, with uh, NEO and our relationship with Konstantin Kirianopoulos. So, so we're more advanced than any other company in North America with the ability to chemically process uh, monazite sands, recover the uranium and the thorium, and ship a clean concentrate uh, carbonate um, uh, to Silmet. So you've demonstrated you can do it, and do you have the ability to scale it up to a to a higher size or a much greater volume? We can scale it up to sizes equivalent to potentially Linus in due course. So um, this is material. This is material that, that what we can do at the mill. We are also doing separations uh, at lab scale and 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 soon to be commercial scale, small commercial. Um, at the mill as well. So uh, when people think, if the people think we're just going to be a, a rare earth uh, carbonate uh, producer, 
Uh, that's not the case at all. We are advancing very, very rapidly, and we have the ability to pilot and operate at commercial levels that nobody else has because of the significant infrastructure we have at the White Mesa Mill. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, Jack Lifton, you've been covering rare earths for you know many, many years. I won't, I won't even attach a number to it. Uh, because I don't want to embarrass anybody here, but you you know you know plenty. You're on the advisory board, and what's your what's your view of of how things have evolved with energy fuels? Energy fuels is an actual commercial producer of the critical materials uranium, vanadium, and the rare earths, and that's I think what people need need to understand. Energy fuels produces a mixed clean mix rare earth carbonate. Uh, of the of the rare earths and so and sells it to a commercial customer. Now, no one has done that in North America in the 21st century, other than energy fuels. And I think people don't really understand that that energy fuels is the only commercial producer of downstream rare earth products today, actually in North America. These are commercial products. They're in commercial quantities and they're sold in the in in the in the world markets. So it's the same with uranium and vanadium. So energy fuels is is an, a producer. It's not a junior in any way. And and I think that a lot of people make the mistake of looking at energy fuels as some kind of junior rare earth venture. It is not. It's a producer, a commercial rare earth venture, and it can only grow. Now, my understanding is that Energy Fuels has a plan to vertically integrate uh, quite a ways down the supply chain. Uh, I believe uh, the plan, and Mark is a better uh, discussed uh, proponent of this than I am, but I believe the plan is to, is to produce rare earth metals and magnet alloys, ultimately. And I'd like to ask Mark a question, if I may, Byron. Go ahead. Uh, Mark. How are you progressing on your on your overall model, your business model of being being a producer of commercial rare earth metals and alloys? What's yeah. your timetable? Well, our timetable is uh, the, the number one thing that holds us back. Okay, is the supply of monazite. If we had truckloads, additional truckloads of monazite showing up at the mill today, we could process that at significant scale. Like if we're pr currently producing somewhere in the order of um, can, can, uh, 1,000 tons of um, uh, monazite sand from Kimors per year, we could scale that up to somewhere in the order of 10,000 tons without any other investment, okay? So, um, so that'd be about 5,000 REO. We're certainly not limited on our ability to process carbon in, in, in time as we, as we, we scale up. I mentioned the uh, piling of the rare earth um, separations which has been going on for a couple months. And, and I don't think anybody really fully appreciates the advances we've made on that front, demonstrating how we can do that and potentially starting commercially at uh, at least the first stage uh, at, uh, in the not too distant future. But also we signed the agreement with uh, um, nanoscale powders uh, for uh, the metal component of a, a patented technology to advance as well. So we are going to get there. When we get, uh, and we're, 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 we're looking all around the world for additional uh, monazite sands, there are many companies, probably around a half a dozen companies talking to us seriously right now, because they appreciate the fact that there is an alternative to China when it comes to the monazite plant. China is processing monazite and has been for the last several years or last few years at least uh, at scale and we're catching up with them. We're catching up with them. Um, just providing an alternative to China. It's not competing with China or trying to do any harm to China. It's just about providing an alternative in the United States of America, operating at, at world-class standards to deal with the radionuclides and advance our monazite plan in the United States. That's a, that's a very uh, exciting plan. I, I would just add that in my own you know studies of the rare earth industry, Chinese have been going around the world, literally buying up monazite sand deposits in places like Colombia, uh, Bolivia, Brazil, uh, you know, part, part, you know, Nigeria, uh, other, 
other areas. And so they're scarfing up everything they can. But but here you are able to offer, you know, a a a, a regulated service, you know, but from you know from the from the sand deposit on the beach to a nuclear certified uh, output that, that is that's controlled. And that's always seemed to have been the the issue with a lot of people. They don't want to they don't want to sell monazite and then have some sort of nuclear liability come back to them. But if you are able to handle that safely, that really puts you, you know, quite a leg, quite a leg above. Uh, let me, Mark, just uh, give us, give the viewers out there a, a quick overview of the, the financial status of, of energy fuels. How are you doing in terms of, uh, you know, funds available and revenues generated, things like that? Yeah, well, we, um, we have a market cap of about 1 billion US dollars. Um, we are debt free. Uh, we have a substantial balance sheet. Uh, we have, you know, in order, depending on how you add it up, uh, with uh, cash, uh, inventories, uh, tradable securities, we have sort of in the order of $150 million plus uh, of uh, working capital at current prices of, of the commodities for uranium and vanadium. Uh, so we are very, very well funded. Uh, we have, um, you know, minor um, uh, cash flow right now. I mean, we, we we're securing some revenue, uh, certainly from the selling of the carbonate uh, to NEO. Uh, we have other uh, opportunities when it comes to alternate feed processing and everything. But, mm -hmm. uh, but look, when you look at uh, the, 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 the plan going forward, we've got an improving uranium market. Mm -hmm. Prices are going up. We've got an improving vanadium market, the prices are recovering again. You have an improving rare earth market, prices are improving. And you have demand for all of those products. There is absolutely no reason if we can fully integrate and add the addition of separations of the rare earth oxides that energy fuels cannot be several hundred million dollars a year of revenue with really uh, significant margins, very attractive margins. And because of the low strike rate on the capital required to get there uh, and the advantage of our operating costs operating in the state of Utah with low power costs, uh, uh, significant um, um, uh, skilled workforce, uh, there, 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 there's a successful outcome here uh, that I believe it's just not under, it's underappreciated right now. And we, but it's our job, it's my job to go and show people how the pieces fit together. So we've got a lot of work to do. And, uh, but, you know, it's our goal to, to catch up to the MPs and Linuses out there uh, because of the strategy that we're executing. Well, it's fair to say, and, and again, viewers out there may or may not know this, but in the last, you know, 20 and 30 years, the, the U.S. in general, has really moved away from being self-sufficient in things like uranium. I mean, we've been importing uranium from Russia, Kazakhstan, places like that. And then the rare earths, you know, there's the China story. So, so here's energy fuels coming along to, to rebuild that industrial capability in the U.S. from literally from the mine and the dump truck to an end product that you can sell. Uh, Jack, Jack, do you have another, another point that you wanted to add? I, I just like to say two things about what's been talked about here. One, I think Mark went uh, by very fast the fact that at the facility, the, the energy fuels facility in White Mesa, Utah, they are running solvent extraction separation modeling of the rare earths. And they have been running solvent extraction operations to separate uranium and vanadium, for example, for nearly four decades down there. Is Can anybody else in the Western world say that they've They've been doing that. Second, I think it's very important to understand that Mark never mentioned subsidies. So, so many people in this market are saying, well, uh, if the government will just pay the difference between our price and the Chinese price, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Mark didn't mention that. He's saying we can be profitable. He has money in the bank. I didn't hear a word about subsidies. So keep in mind, this is actually a real business, a real commercial venture in rare earths. And uh, I don't know, but uh, let me ask Mark. Mark, are you planning to depend on 
subsidies from the United States federal government in order to be profitable? No. No, we don't need subsidies. We need monazite. Once we secure the monazite, uh, it all fits together. So I, I think you know, right now we trade as a uranium stock. I mean, we trade with you know all the our uranium peer group. We don't trade as a rare earth stock. But I think as soon as we can show we have material quantities of monazite lined up for long term to go through the mill, that will change. And so that's the real opportunity for investors. If you know, if you're interested in critical minerals, you're interested in low carbon um, um, energy uh, and electrification. Uh, you know, we're, we're a one-stop shop for that kind of investment. And um, so, yeah, and, and I, 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 it's just unique. As I said, there is no comparison to us, uh, to others, because nobody straddles the fences on both the rare earths and the, the uranium and the vanadium. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an exciting opportunity. We have to put the dots together for investors. I hope that we can do that this year. And, and really show that we're going to be a multi-billion dollar company. But I have to put the dots together. You know, is anything guaranteed? Nothing is 100% guaranteed. But if we can't make it, who else is going to make it focusing on monocytes in North America? Now, Byron, I just want to make another comment on the radionuclides because of the fact that we, we, we have this long history of recovering uranium at the, at the mill. But we have two state-of-the-art triple line uh, uh, tailing cells that are designed for a thousand years. We have two more cells that we hope will be permitted this year for another 4 million tons of capacity. The site is a perpetual care facility with the U.S. government, okay? All those are other attributes what makes us different than anybody else out there in the world a perpetual care facility for disposal of the tailings at the White Mesa Mill. So, you know, the more you peel back the, the, the banana here mm -hmm. and see what we do, how we do it, uh, and the, the skill sets of our staff, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a remarkable story. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm biased. Yes, I've been in this business, at least uranium business for 40 years. So I, I think I have the right to say, I can be biased if I know what we can do and how we can do things. So anyways, I don't know what else to say, Byron, but it's a, it's a very unique uh, a spot to be. And Constantine Kirianopoulos uh, say it could be the missing link to the rare earth business, not just in North America, but the world. Well, you've summed it up beautifully. I, I have nothing else to add uh, to the viewers out there who are watching this. Uh, the name is Energy Fuels. And uh, we just told you all about it. It's all about monazite, uh, and uh, and this 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 is this this humble looking little crystal is the future uh, for a lot of things in this world. And with that, I thank you, Jack, and I thank you, Mark, and I wish you well uh, with uh, personally and with your company. And to viewers out there, I wish you well with your investing. And remember, monazite. This is how you get it. This is how you do it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Byron. Thank you.